Good morning. Uh, before starting my presentation or introducing myself, I want to just ask how many people here have used Google Maps to get here? Please raise yes, your hands. I see almost 90% of everyone attending here have used it. And this is something I really want to emphasize about prof professionalism in our industry. It's reliability. Google Maps has been used uh, by most of you because it's a reliable source of information consistently. And this is something I want to emphasize. So, wait, I think it's not working. All right, sorry, thank you. Uh, my name is Firas. I'm a project manager at CTO. And my, if usually I am called, it means there's a problem on precise location in construction sites or in GIS, NIS pro, uh, uh, hazard problems. We work with multiple uh, uh, groups of constructions. And uh, yeah, basically, if if you have a position problem, I am here to help. I'm not here to sell anything today. I'm here actually to just present a big project that took a lot of efforts to do. So um, our mission, as I started stating, is uh, fix problems anytime, anywhere. And uh, we are based in the city of Nazareth, but we work uh, all over uh, this project is in Jerusalem, but we also consult internationally to many companies that also face some of the problems that you'll see here. Yeah, it's an interesting video. So I'm going to mention a lot of stuff today. One of it is going to be VRS, because it's what is most commonly used in, uh, in our country. You see, there are three providers for, uh, for, for virtual reference stations. I'm going to mention uh, the size of a project and the accuracy and everything uh, related to the project itself, and how we're moving an old city to a smart one. Let's start with what makes it so hard to map the city of Jerusalem. And this is something that I've been facing for the past year. We're talking about, uh, in a way, a hard terrain. It's a very, they ha we have a lot of gradients, ups and downs, which makes the, uh, the, the terrain model not always precise. We have a lot of jumps in height. Uh, when we're speaking about buildings, we have a lot of high buildings and narrow streets between. And that makes uh, connectivity to GNSS networks problematic. When we're, it's, we're speaking about really crowded areas all over the year, 24-7, we really tried walking at 2 AM, and there were hundreds of people around the street strolling. I know it's not very common in Germany, but it is common in Jerusalem. Uh, we're I'm going to talk about accessibility. And uh, when I talk about accessibility, it means the, uh, the, the way of bringing the equipment into the sites and to, to just measure. Because we're here talking about a really, really precise uh, require, uh, precision require, high precision requirements. We're going to talk about security a bit because there are a lot of stuff that we were restricted to do while we were working. So it, it made our job much more difficult. And it all is, uh, at the end of the day, uh, can be seen in, in cost and efficiency uh, for the project itself. So why did I mention VRS, as I said? Because most of the surveyors in uh, in the, in, the, in the Middle East region are using virtual reference systems, uh, yeah, satellite uh, stations. And it is good for most part. For 80% of the job, you can rely on that. And, uh, and you, you see that when someone is going to order, uh, uh, order a job for surveying, they're going to ask for some requirements. But you see, when you work with the vendors all over the year, they're going to need something that they can rely on 
every time, every day, no matter what is the situation. And this is what I'm going to exp explain here. You see, as I said, if it's a narrow street, you're not going to see the satellites from the, from the, sorry, from the, uh, from the station that you're working with. And the base stations around you are going to be, even though they're going to have that connection, you're not going to have it. If, in a magical case, you're going to have that connection and you don't have internet connection, which is common uh, around the city, it is also a problem. So we're speaking about multiple hazards concerning high and uh, low terrains with dense, uh, build, uh, dense, dense high buildings and narrow streets while the area is crowded. Now, there are VRS-based solutions and non-VRS-based solutions. And as we know, uh, laser scanners and total stations or multi-stations are part of it, which, which can like, be the solution for part of the problem. And while the other VRS-based solutions uh, are like mobile mappers, drone, and RTK, can be problematic as well on other aspects. So, Let's see when and how can we use what in, in, in different problems. See, when we're talking about total station, multi-stations, uh, the acquire of the data is very low in, in, in matter of time versus costs. Because you're going to probably be able to do 200, 300 meters in one day while using a mobile mapper on your car is much more uh, effective in collecting various amounts of data. But the question is, uh, how reliable, accurate, and its value is uh, uh, in, in, the, in the same project? In this specific project, um, and this chart, oh, uh, people, it's only available for this specific project. It, we do it for every project. And the, the reason I'm mentioning this project is because this chart was the most different than, other char uh, than uh, all the other charts and other projects due to the complexity of the project. So we wanted accuracy. They want th we've had to work on a one centimeter level accuracy in the alleys and the, in the crowded areas. So we must have used multi-stations to, to, to measure uh, the, the details and, and to have quality control on, on the site. At the same time, we needed a huge amount of, uh, of data. You know, we needed the landlines, everything. So we needed to go through the city using a, a, a mobile mapper. While mobile mapper and not drone, because it's a very restricted area for the use of drones, even if it's for the municipality of Jerusalem, you can't fly drones. You need like five or six authorities to sign your paper just for the same specific day. We are specialized in getting those signatures, but on this project, it was literally impossible. So this is why ease to capture on drones, it was this low. But you can see that the, that the value of it would have been really high. And also, the cost efficiency, as you know, in drones, you collect data for very cheap price in a very fast time. Uh, so. We did, use, uh, we did create uh, stations using land RTK. Uh, we, did we did use the rover and base method for a couple of stations. And then we went by the total station and just mapped what we needed ma to map for quality control. And afterwards, we just went with the mobile mapper, not relying on its VRS uh, 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 RTK data acquired, but by the uh, a connection between uh, the, the cloud points themselves and creating uh, and using uh, actually uh, the points that we, we that we measured with the total station to make the cloud really much more accurate. And afterwards, you you see that I haven't mentioned laser scanners in this chart because in this kind of project, it's an added uh, product. Like you add it to you you use it to just add uh, a specific points or specific stuff. And it's not something that you need, but you use it to just make your life easier, I guess. 
So this is the size of the project, actually. We're talking about uh, more uh, six kilometers radius. I think it's bigger than that. But you can see that we had a lot of alleys. We needed to walk all these streets and the alleys between them, which made this project much more complex. Uh, the, uh, I, I should have put another map to show the height differences, because I know this street is 100 meters higher than this point. And yeah, 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 I see that uh, surprised face. But we had a really highs and uh, ups and lows here, and it's, it was very difficult. I'm going to show you an example of the use of uh, the total station data overlaid with the point cloud in multiple places to just show different uh, um, st uh, yes, case uses of the, of the GUDA collection. You see, using it, it was, it, it, you see how crowded the streets are from both sides and how many cars there are. So this is an example what, where mobile mapping just failed us in this street in a way. So we had to go by total stations and, uh, laser, and laser scanners to just add the different data that we needed that was missing. On another case, another street, we can see the, uh, actually a different kind of uh, perspective by seeing when it's an empty street, how, how the data really helped us uh, to just cut costs and do it much faster and much smoother. And uh, this is a really good example where the mobile mapper have really just cut us a week or two of uh, of just hard uh, measurements. This is uh, this third example I'm going to use to just uh, mention and sh show the, how the data that uh, that, wa does wa that was extracted could have only been by mobile mapper in this case. Because you see, if I used drones in this and we had the trees, we would have not seen the the, the wall behind the, uh, under the tree. And this is a, a, a crucial part for uh, quality control on our overall project. So uh, if to mention, there's also the, the problem of using photogrammetry for cable lines. As you can see, all these cable lines would have not been seen in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in drone footage, photo, uh, in photogrammetry. And it would have been really, really, really hard to measure them using total stations. We've had projects where we needed to just measure, uh, because of the heat, how much the cable uh, cable's height differ during different periods if, between summer and winter. And this made our life much easier. Because sometimes you do need that one centimeter accuracy, and sometimes it's just, it, 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 differ it differentiates, it depends on the need in the, in the, sa in the same specific project. Now, why did we need all this data so accurate? Uh, so accurate? Well, first of all, it's a, it's a very good foundation for the, for the GIS system. When we're talking about smart cities, we, can, we can't not mention digital twins. You see, a lot of the construction companies we work with are starting to demand much more for, uh, for much longer. If we are to talk about digital twin, it's like starting speaking about what we use Google Maps for. See, if we have a reliable source of real-time data going from the user and to back to the user, this is one of the pivotal uh, uh, foundations of the digital twin. So let's see, see what is the use of the GIS mainly now. This is actually a survey, surveyed by, uh, by by a, a surveying company also, it was, it's, it's to mention that what we use in GIS system mainly is orthomosaic, which is orthophoto. Uh, we, see, we go search for street names for buildings and very few utilities. We're talking about the IEC uh, and stuff like that. So what we need is to shift the, from this perspective to uh, to more autonomous live data for smart cities. And this is what we're actually starting to do uh, with the electricity company and other companies inside the, the city of Jerusalem. 
we can use the data we, we already have for, for much more. See, if we, if we know in real time that there was a hazard uh, in an electric line, we can just send someone to, to, to fix it. We're not talking about digital shadow, but a digital twin, where in real time you get data to the center, and the center sends data to the point of work. And in this specific project, we started for the parking spots. It really started there, because as you saw the, one of the roads, it was really dense, and there was nowhere to actually either park or the people can move, and it's a problem many tourists see every year. So it started with actually allocating uh, different kind of uh, parking spots. And as you know, in uh, malls, we have that system where you can see how many parking spots are left open or unavailable. And sometimes it's, uh, it's also common in cities, but does it, what database does it report back to? Can you see it in your Waze or in your Google Maps? And it moves from there to, to I mean, I, I know it's a simple idea, but if you have smart trash bins, and we took, took this from a project that was conducted in Dubai, that if, 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 the, if the garbage bin is filled or has some weight inside of it, the, the, in the GIS system, it would have been alerted, and, and uh, there, there would have been someone sent to just, you know, keep the check and everything uh, really, really everything, you know. Traffic data, it's already been used, but we're talking about a higher level of it because you can use uh, stationary points inside the project for sensors to make stuff actually much more reportable. We've seen that it's been used actually in some cities, but not in the old city of Jerusalem. So the progress of the project uh, we're talking about, I've mentioned about the parking spots and the accessibility, and that it is being a foundation for the future. Uh, we've been through a lot in the past year and a half. Uh, all the data was that was collected uh, is going to be going to the planners to actually, it, it is being used not just for GIS, for GIS and for construction. We have a big amount of data that is being used for multiple reasons. So it's, we're talking about cost effective for the clients themselves also as well. And this is actually what we're actually trying to achieve in this project. So for summary, I'm just gonna say, I, it, for big scale projects, the reliability that the client had in us what was what made this project different. If we can be uh, uh, more professional on every level and not just count on the, soft, on the technology to do the job for us, but to actually add the value uh, to the technology or take the added value from the technology and extract what we can take to the future, this is what we're going to have. So I am going to say that anticipation was really one of the key factors of this project because we had to anticipate the crowds, the, all the problems that I mentioned in one of the first slides, and uh, being, uh, having an open head to this project and just you know, being open to having different solutions to different problems and even seeing them uh, really made this place special. Thank you very much, everyone.